I've been meaning to tell you, um, J.J. Abrams, I mean, we're like this, I mean, you know, and so he, he called me and I was like, bro, I'm a pastor though, Kylo, can't I be like Luke Skywalker or something? I'm a pastor. He's like, it's like 20 million. I'm like, I'll buy everybody in my church a car. Let's do it. Okay. This is good. This is good. It's just, in case you hadn't seen Star Wars, I'm not really in it. Just in case you were wondering. Okay. I, it's cool. Hey, special announcement today. So excited that this is the first weekend of our new Abernathy campus. Would you help me welcome Abernathy joining us via video? Abernathy, what's up? We are so glad that you're with us today as well. And we're starting a new series called At The Movies. How many guys have been here for At The Movies before at our church? Very good. Basically in this series, we take some movie clips, okay? We don't show a movie the whole time. <laughs> we take some clips and we talk about just a biblical perspective on those clips. So I've got Star Wars today, as you know. Uh, it was released, The Force Awakens was released in 2015. It was the highest grossing film in North America ever. And it's the third highest grossing film of all time with a worldwide gross now of over $2 billion. How many of you guys seen Star Wars? By show of hands, you seen Star Wars? Very good. One theme you're gonna see throughout this movie is these contrasting responses to the dark side, right? Like on the one hand, you have Kylo Ren and he embraces the dark side, right? Even when he, in that one scene, he's feeling drawn back to the light, what does he do? Draws away, tries to draw strength from the darkness. It leads to him eventually in that scene I was in, sort of, okay, after that, spoiler alert, he kills his dad, all right, Han Solo. So he, Kylo Ren, his response to the darkness is to embrace it, right? But contrast that with Finn's response. You know Finn, right? We all like Finn. What'd Finn do? He, he was raised in the dark side. He was a stormtrooper and all of that. But eventually he turns away. Remember, he couldn't fire his gun in that village and he helps that fighter pilot from the resistance escape and ultimately helps to save the Republic from destruction. So instead of embracing the dark side like Ren, Finn resists the dark side. And believe it or not, the Bible says that you and I have a similar choice. You're like, there's Star Wars in the Bible? Sort of. Okay, Acts, if you got a Bible, chapter 26. <clears throat> Words will be on the screen too. Let me set this up. Paul is sharing his testimony before a king. Saul, Paul, New Testament. And he told the king, hey king, let me just tell you this story. It's a crazy story. He said, one day I was going to Damascus. I was on the road to Damascus. And here's the thing. I was uh, going to arrest Christians there. I was going to put them in chains and drag them back to Jerusalem. I hated Christians. I hated Christians. I persecuted Christians. He said, but while I was on that road to Damascus, something happened, King. You've got to understand. He said, something happened. He said, there was this light that shone down from heaven. He said, it was brighter than the sun. He said, King, it knocked me to the ground. I'm on the ground. It knocked my friends that were with me. We're all on the ground. I'm looking up at this light. And he said, I heard a voice. And the voice said, Saul, Saul, or Paul, same guy. Why are you persecuting me? And then Paul responds, obviously, uh, on the ground. Uh, who are you, Lord? What does the voice say? I'm Jesus, the one you're persecuting. Paul's thinking, I got this all wrong. Okay, I totally messed this thing up. Basically, Jesus says, bro, get up off the ground. You don't say bro, but in modern English. Bro, bro, get up off the ground, okay? Then he says, you're going to go. You're going to tell people about me what I've done right here on this day. That's where we pick up. Paul's talking to the king. Tell him the king what Jesus said to him. So then Jesus said, Acts 26, 17, Yes, Paul, I am sending you to the Gentiles. Who are they? The non-Jewish people. That's like all of us. To open their eyes. I'm going to send you to the Gentiles. You're going to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness, the dark side, to light, and from the power of Satan to God. We're going to camp out there for a minute. What I want you to hear today is that in the same way, there's a dark side in Star Wars. In our world, according to the Bible, there's also darkness. We don't call it a dark side, but essentially same thing, okay? It's, there's light, and then there's darkness. And here's, here's what many of us don't know, and Paul was going to open our eyes to this. We all start out in darkness. You don't start out in the light. You start out in darkness, you either stay in darkness or you end up in the light. But everybody, all of us have been in darkness. The Bible says this. 
Psalm 51, five, David said, for I was born a, what? A sinner, I was born in darkness, basically. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. Now, here's the thing. You would not argue with me if you've ever had children, okay, that were born in darkness. Have you heard of the terrible twos? It could be called the dark side twos. It's the same thing. <laughs> Did you have to teach, teach your kids how to disobey you? Did you teach them that? Did you sit down and say, hey, here's the thing. If I make a rule, here's how you do No, they came out of the womb wanting to disobey you. Okay, they did. It just, I have kids, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying all of our kids are crazy. I'm just saying they all sort of are, okay? And we're all in darkness, okay? <laughs> and my, my daughter, I have a seven-year-old, she just turned seven. She's got a degree in the dark side, okay? It's a degree in it. It's called a master's degree of disobeying her mom, okay? You've got the kids like that. Some of you have had kids. Recently, um, she kind of got into a little seven-year-old dispute with her friend down the street, Karis did it. And so Karis let something come out of her mouth that should not come out of the mouth of a preacher's kid, okay? She was not happy with this girl, so Karis said, yeah, I don't know what they were fighting about. She said, yeah, to my daughter, to this girl, said, yeah, well, your dad, he's fat. <laughs> preacher's daughter called the girl's dad fat, okay? That girl didn't like it, so she looked at Karis. She says, Karis, uh, your dad, he's skinny, all right? And so... Uh, <laughs> Kara said, Dad, that made me cry. She called you skinny. I said, girl, I got huge pecs. You don't even have to worry about me, okay? You don't have to worry about this. <laughs> what are y'all laughing at? And so, uh, <laughs> so the dark side. Kids get it. We're born in darkness. And here's what we mean by darkness. When I say darkness, I mean doing things your way rather than God's way. Now, some of you would say, Chris, I'm not doing things God's way right now. I know that. But doing things my way, it's not like really darkness, though, because that doesn't sound bad. Just doing things my way, it's not a big deal right now. Maybe I'll follow God later. Paul says it's deeper than that, though. He said when you're in the darkness, doing things your way, he said you're under the power of who? You remember? You're under the power of who? Satan. So when you're doing things your way, and they're contrary to God's way, you're not just doing things your way. You're doing things under the power and influence of Satan. But you don't know that. I didn't know that because our eyes hadn't been opened. See, Jesus said, Paul, you're going to go open people's eyes to help them see when they're doing things their way, running away from God. They're not just doing things their way. They're following Satan, the evil one. And he's going to try to destroy their life. Jesus said, Paul, hey, go open people's eyes to this because we don't know that. We just call it doing things our way. I'm just going this way. You're being influenced and led by Satan, and he's going to ruin your life if you let him. So how do you get from the darkness to the light? How do you get out from under the power of Satan and into, Star Wars nerds here, into the power or the force, the force, okay, I'm trying, the force of God. How do you get out from under the power of Satan into the force of God? Watch. What does it say in the verse? Yes, I'm sending you the Gentiles to open their eyes, because they don't know this, so that they may, what's that word? So that they may help me out one more time. They may what? you got to turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. How do you get out of the, darks, the darkness or in, uh, in the dark side and into the light? What do you have to do? You have to what? You have to, you have to turn. You have to turn. In experienced life, we call that turning, committing your life to Christ. The big Bible word for that is, starts with an R. What is it? Call repentance. Repentance, our word. It's turning from your sin, from the darkness, from being under the power of Satan and saying, I ain't doing that anymore. Why am I following him? That's dumb. And turning to the light, to Jesus, the King of the light. You turn, and here's what happens when you turn. Next verse, then they will receive forgiveness for their sins. Isn't that what you want? It's what all of us want. We want to know that our sins are forgiven. And they'll be given a place among God's people who are set apart by faith in me. So when you, what? When you turn, you get forgiveness of sin, according to Jesus, and a place among God's people. You get adopted as a child of God. You get adopted into God's family. It's amazing. But you have to what? You have to turn from darkness to the light. I want to share with you a surprising example, somebody in the Bible who made this turn. It will surprise you that somebody like this would make this turn, but I want to show it to you in Luke 23, if you're turning with me. 
Basically, the Jewish religious leaders arrest Jesus. They bring Jesus to Pilate. He was the Roman governor, not like an airplane pilot, okay? Pilate, a governor at the time. It's his name. And they said, hey, Pilate, um, this Jesus guy right here, this Jesus guy right here, um, I got to tell you about him. Um, he's telling people not to pay their taxes to the Roman government. That wasn't true, but that's what they said. And, and this Jesus guy, uh, Pilate right here, this Jesus guy right here, we're going to have to get rid of him because here's the thing. He claims to be a king. And there's no king besides Caesar. Pilate looks in the eyes of Jesus and says, are you a king? What does Jesus say? Yeah, sure am. Pilate says, well, I find nothing wrong with this guy. They're like, you're going to have to kill him. Take care of this guy. Pilate's like, okay, here's what I'm going to do for you Jewish leaders. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to beat him up. I'm going to flog him, beat him to a pulp. And then I'm going to let him go because he hadn't really done anything wrong. They said, no, Pilate, we want you to kill him, but not just kill him. We want you to crucify him. Put nails in his wrists into a cross. Put nails into his feet into a cross. Crucify him, Pilate. But what's he done wrong? Crucify him. He eventually gives in to their wishes. And what does he do? He sentences Jesus to be what? To be crucified. But was Jesus crucified alone? He had some people with him. You know the story? Luke 23, 39. One of the criminals hanging beside Jesus scoffed, mocked him, and said, you can imagine how he would say this, so you're the Messiah, huh? You're the Messiah, are you? Well, why don't you prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it? You're all big time, right? Jesus, I hear you're big, you think you're big time. Why don't you save us all off this cross? Criminal mocking the king of the kingdom of light dying right next to him. But then something remarkable happens. Verse 40. The other criminal, remember there's two guys, the other guy protested and started arguing with that criminal that just mocked Jesus. He said, bro, in my translation, bro, don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? Come on. We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man, Jesus, he hadn't even done anything wrong. This criminal lived all his life in darkness. What's he kind of starting to do a little bit? He's starting to turn a little bit, isn't he? One of the ways we know he's turning is he stands up for Jesus. Jesus is being mocked. The guy's like, dude, shut your mouth, okay? And stands up for Jesus. Watch. 42. Then he said, that criminal said, Jesus, imagine this. Jesus. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Can't you imagine being him up on the cross? Jesus, um, <clears throat> here's the thing. I know I don't deserve this. Jesus, I've lived all of my life in darkness. I know you probably can't do this, actually, but while I'm up here dying on this cross, I just thought I'd ask. Jesus, would you remember me? When you come into your kingdom. I, if you say no, it's okay, I understand. But I just thought I'd ask. What does Jesus, the king of the kingdom of light, say hanging on that cross? 43. And Jesus replied, I assure you to the criminal, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. What? What? This guy's lived in darkness all his life. Surely the Son of God's not going to accept him. Surely the Son of God's not going to welcome him. But he starts to turn. He says, Jesus, will you remember me? And Jesus basically says, welcome to the light. Come on in. Today, when you die, you're going to be with me in paradise, even though you've lived your whole life in the dark. There's some of you here today, this campus, all of our campuses, and you've wondered, since you've lived in darkness all of your life, if Jesus would welcome you into the light. You've wondered that. Now you know. Now you know. Regardless of what you've done, if you're willing to turn from the power of Satan, from the darkness, from doing things your way from sin, to Jesus, He'll say to you, welcome to the light.
one day, whenever you go, you will be with me in paradise. We call this turn committing your life to Christ. You don't have to wonder anymore if Jesus will welcome you if you turn. He will. He did it for me. And he's already done it for many of you. Two questions and I'm done. Number one, be honest with yourself. Has there been a time in your life where you remember turning from the darkness and turning to Jesus, the King of the light? Where you admitted that doing things your way and being under the power of control of Satan was sinful and was separating you from God and you turned to Jesus and said like the criminal, Jesus, would you forgive me and save me? I'm turning, Jesus. Best now, would you welcome me into the light? If you haven't had a time like that, why don't you turn today? How's the darkness? You like that? You like what it's doing to you? You like what it's doing to your family? You like being under the power and control of Satan? I don't think so. So why don't you turn away from that today and turn to the light? Turn to Jesus, the King of the kingdom of the light. He'll welcome you with open arms and he'll do something amazing in your life. Commit your life to Jesus today. Second question. <clears throat> For those of you that have made the turn, how are you doing resisting the pull of the darkness? Because even as Christians, we still can feel the pull, right? We call it temptation to kind of turn back again or to fall back into those same sin patterns. How are you doing resisting the darkness? Some of you'd have to say, uh, Pastor, not very good. I keep, it's frustrating, Pastor, because I want to walk in the light, and I just keep falling back into the darkness, this dumb stuff I've done before. I've got good news for you today. What did Jesus say to Paul would happen when you turn from darkness to light? You would turn from the power of Satan to the power of God. You have power now. Draw on the power of God that he has given you to resist the pull of the darkness, to resist the force of the darkness. You have the power of God to help you. You don't have to resist the pull. It's a strong pull, isn't it? You don't have to resist it on your own. Draw on the power of God through prayer. God, I'm feeling drawn back. I'm feeling tempted to go back to that junk that was ruining my life. God, help me. Draw on his power through prayer. Draw on his power through reading the Bible, believing the truth of God's word rather than the lies he's telling you. Leverage his power. Draw on his power. Draw on his power by surrounding yourself with godly people. If you want to go this direction and all your friends are going this direction, how successful do you think you're going to be going this direction? Not very. Draw on the power of God by surrounding yourself with godly people that are going to help you keep walking in the light. But Christian, listen to me. You have the power of God. Draw on his power. You've come out from under the power of Satan. Now you belong to God and he's given you power. Make sure you use it. Every day you're feeling the pull, draw on the power of God. So here's what I'm saying today, this is it. There's a dark side in our world today. Jesus said Paul was gonna be sent to open people's eyes to that because they don't totally see it to turn people from darkness to light and help people realize they're under the power of Satan, even though they think it's just doing what they want to do, rather than the power of God. My prayer today is that your eyes would be opened, that you'd see the darkness you're in and you would turn to the light, that you'd see when you're being drawn back that you have the power of God to resist and keep walking in the light. And as you turn and as you walk with Jesus in the light, watch what he does in your life, because it's gonna be amazing. Because his plan for your life will always be better than your plan for your life. Don't go this direction. Go this direction by the power of God and watch what he does. Now I have to end like this for all you Star Wars fans, okay? May the force of God be with you. Let me pray. God, thank you so much uh, for this day and for the word of God. Open people's eyes today, God, to see they're under the power and influence of Satan, to be delivered from that by turning to Jesus and walking in the light. God, give people power to resist the darkness as that force pulls them 
Give them power to resist and to walk in the light. God, do amazing things in the lives of people today. God, open our eyes so that we see the wickedness of the darkness and how it's going to destroy our lives and families and everything else and help us to continue to turn away from it and walk in the light and follow Jesus, the King of the kingdom of light. God, do an amazing work in everybody's heart right now. In Jesus' great name. Thanks for checking out one of our messages today. For more information about our church or to watch other messages, you can go to our website at experiencelifenow.com. Let us know if we can serve you in any way, and we hope to see you real soon.